panel. <laughs> so we have a really diverse panel, 50-50 on gender, 50-50 on many different metrics, right? So thank you all for being here. Now, innovation and transformation, I think, are the most abused and most generic words ever used. Would you agree? Yeah. So I think we will figure out from these guys, what do these words mean for them in their context? And we have people from such diverse companies, such diverse experiences that I'm sure we'll learn a lot. And I'll have just two questions. So this is the first one. Wait for the next one. And in the end, I'll summarize what my takeaways are. And then you guys can figure out what your, your takeaways are. So I'll start with Prabha. Prabha, what do these two words signify to you? First of all, I don't agree that the, they are the most abused words. I love those words. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so innovation to me is about um, accepting and bringing change voluntarily and uh, considering it as an opportunity rather than a threat. So I would say, you know, broadly, I would define innovation that. And on the transformation side, I would say it's about efficiency, effectiveness, and trying to make the right use of technology. Now, having said that, I would take it to the next level and say what is impactful innovation because otherwise innovation is, is huge entertainment for any organization. So impactful innovation is all about uh, bringing in your clients right in the center of your innovative efforts, which means um, that you consider what your clients use currently and what is the future vision for your client experience. And bringing that to the center of your business and operations and IT would clearly give you a vision of you know, how to build the right capabilities and how to bring the mindset and, of course, make sure that the client-centric innovation is, uh, is what is driving you. And uh, bringing in transformation along with innovation really makes innovation um, productive and uh, impactful. At the same time, um, you know, bringing innovation into transformation makes transformation exciting. Otherwise, transformation is another equally, um, you know, equally uh, used word across all organizations because transformation is a compulsion. Innovation is a choice, but transformation is a compulsion and a mandatory um, activity that every, every organization needs to go through. So to me, I think transformation combined with innovation, which means that you bring the transformation efforts extremely innovatively into the organization in the right places would, would uh, make innovation and transformation a great combination. Thank you, Prabha. Uh, let me ask uh, Sandeep, you know, you're also an ex-banker <laughs> like her or maybe a current banker. So what is your world view on these two words? Well, I guess uh, these two words are about doing something which has never been done before. And if you set about to doing something which has never been done before, the question is how fast can you do it, okay? And uh, I always draw inspiration from Dr. Jonas Salk. In 1955, he invented polio vaccine. Now, of course, uh, you know, the invention itself was uh, remarkable and made a huge impact on humanity. But what was amazing about that invention was that he created an ecosystem around him for the invention. So he included academia, a team of researchers. So till then, all inventions used to be done by a single scientist staring down a telescope, a, a microscope. Okay? So he, for the first time, created an ecosystem through which he invented the vaccine, and the result was the vaccine was re uh, invented in a record time. Okay? So fast forward uh, post that, there is nothing significant which has ever been invented since then which can be attributed to an individual. Okay? So similarly today, of course, we have gone far away from individuals, but now it's a question of how do we not try and do something within an organization, and can we create an ecosystem? And I think GCCs are ideally placed for building that ecosystem for change and invention and innovation, and they'll be able to do it much faster than what uh, an organization would be able to do it by themselves. Thanks, Sandeep. Let me turn to Lalita. Lalita, you have seen Cargill and, you know, IKEA and now JLR, very, very diverse businesses and IBM. What's your take on this? So I'll probably tell you what is innovation is not. Okay, that's a good way. <laughs> because I think, <clears throat> you know, this summarized uh, very well in terms of what is innovation. But in, innovation is definitely not about just chasing the next big buzzword that is happening in the, uh, you know, industry, right? I think it is all innovations should definitely have a purpose and uh, how you can implement it, how you can take it forward in the organization. Innovation just for the sake of innovation is not a uh, thing. And uh, transformation, I really like what uh, Prabha said, right? It's, it's an innovation is, um, you know, transformation is a necessity. And uh, again, transformation is not everything that is difficult for you to implement from a line management that you just give it a nice uh, twist about it and put a transformational hat and uh, 
you know, ask, just ask a set of experts or the people to come together to do it, that is not transformation. That is transformation again is, has to be fundamental uh, shift in your thought process, shift in how you work as an organization to achieve the next big thing or the next big turn that you need to take so that you need to be careful in terms of where you're going and how you're going. Um, so that's why I said I will tell you what it is not. Yeah. Thanks, Lalita. And now to Anilesh, <laughs> who yes, has seen it all in this industry. <laughs> you have the biggest <laughs> database of whatever has happened in this industry. <laughs> I think I'd like to bring this in the context of an actual use case. Um, so innovation and transformation, yeah, it's all about enhancing value, creating growth opportunities, enhancing productivity, and basically transforming the way the company is structured to enable all of that. And the GCCs play a big role in, in making that happen. Uh, take a step back, just paint a slightly bigger picture. The US population is about 340 million, give or take. Now, if you take a look at some of the data, it's going, growing at about 0.5% every year. And another 15 to 20 years, that growth rate comes down to 0.15%. Basically, what I'm saying is the share of the US market, that pie, is not growing. Therefore, companies need to start becoming innovative in their way of creating solutions to go ahead and address this, this particular problem. I come from a healthcare insurance background. At least that was the last one that I did. And this was for a Fortune 50 company. And what they're really looking at doing is saying, okay, let's take a look at different segments out here. For example, those who are age 65 and above, that population is going to double in the next two decades. Therefore, the way the lenses that we wear to take a look at the problems they're facing from a healthcare perspective, we have to take a look at that. So what, is, what do these companies do? They start saying, okay, now let's use AI, since today's all about AI. Let's use AI and do something new and interesting with, let's say, claims processing. And EXL was talking a little bit about you know, using, improving call center capabilities in that. Call center capabilities. Now, these are both bottom line oriented product uh, approaches. If you were to take a top line oriented uh, approach, which is to generate revenues, et cetera, for example, that, then you know, we could be talking about in this new segment of 65 plus, how do we price how do we assess risk and how are we therefore able to go ahead and address a newer market that is emerging? Those are some of the examples I thought I'd bring to bear. And does the GCC have a role to play in this? Absolutely it does. Thanks, Anilesh. Kripa, you have been a CFO and those guys are, you know, different, right? What's your sort of take on that? <laughs> I was going to say happy birthday, I'm not going to say it now. <laughs> uh, so th I think everything is covered over here. So I <laughs> So I'm going to, I'm going to uh, give this as an example in terms of, so, so uh, data is the common thing between the CFO world and this, don't listen to what Pankaj is saying. So I will give an example in terms of um, innovation um, back in the day, three decades back, um, I'm thankful that everybody over here is about th that many years, uh, doing a macro was innovation, right? And, and the person who had that macro on their laptop, CFOs also did those kind of things. Um, was the high point in life, seeing time has got saved and uh, and I think I learned the macro when I was in Smith Klein Beecham and doing something for the packing stations to move Horlicks from one uh, side of the state to the other and there was a press of the button and the uh, Word document came out really fast. Now if I'd held that and I held that document in my desktop like Mother God uh, and anybody who wanted that uh, document which had to be handed over to the trucks which moved with, uh, with all the consignment, needed to come to my workstation and I would give a printout and go. Somehow I felt very powerful. It's like God, you know, because you're the one giving that kind of a thing. Uh, innovation is that. I had an innovation team, but I keep telling them that if you do that, you're going to be stuck with that Word document for the rest of your life. Uh, I, I think I've repeated this example uh, of several things I've done like this over and over again. Uh, when I was at Microsoft, we actually created this fantastic KPI document, which was again mic micro-driven with some zillion uh, uh, data points on how compliances should be tracked. Uh, and, uh, and I would demonstrate this, and I, I think I got my promotions and all th and that way. Very innovative because it was press of a button, the KPI was coming out, now Power BI does it and Tableau does it, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of tools do it. But when it started scaling, and here is where, this is innovation for sure. Uh, for me, transformation is the ability for an innovator to, or the inventor to give it up and say move to the next. Uh, you've innovated. Your mind is about innovation. Now move it and scale it. 
Uh, I think Shashwat and KPMG, all those teams actually really spoke about this. So, me, transformation is don't do what Shri Kripa did. Please hand over that Word document to somebody who is maybe sitting in the factory uh, and, and knows how to press a button as much as you do. You invent it, give it, scale it, put it in all, across all factories. You invent it, scale it. In, you know, you don't do it deliberately. Unconsciously, somewhere you're saying, oh my God, my stamp is not there, my name is not there, it is going, I'm not getting recognition and stuff like that. So I think for me, the transformation part is the ability to move, the ability to openly say, okay, fine, here, take it on and scale it. Because you might need different platforms when you're scaling. And I gave a small macro example, but for larger things, you need a different platform. All there are experts over here in terms of if I, if I have to move it beyond India, the platforms have to be different, the compliances in terms of the, uh, the law of the land is different. Scale it and see your uh, you know, your, uh, your discovery becoming much bigger. And the same example that he gave, if the vaccination had not moved uh, from across the globe, we wouldn't have been recognizing it today. So for me, transformation is the ability of the uh, inventor to say, okay, I really want to sort of globalize it. Fantastic. So I think this is all, you know, past. Now we have to figure out what is it that people can do in the future. There are people in the room who want to start on the journey. So let me start with Sandeep who has been doing sales and BPO and everything that I think apart from Tai Chi. So what lessons would you give to people who are starting on the journey on how should they think about it, maybe reinvent the whole way we have thought about these things? Well, I think the biggest thing to focus on, you know, despite all the AI and Gen AI talk is the people part of it. Okay, eventually it's the people which will drive this. And from a GCC context, I think uh, we have underinvested in the life of an employee. I think lives of, empl lives of employees are becoming very difficult. Uh, you know, when they overlap with uh, the US in the evening, and especially if it's the West Coast, there are uh, almost all employees are working late evenings every day, five days a week. If that happens, they will get burnt out. Okay. The second thing that is happening is more and more GCCs are now saying that we will not give people opportunities to move overseas and they should look for careers within the GCC. So the moment that happens, you are not really giving enough career opportunities for uh, employees. And uh, the question is, you know, GCCs are here to stay. Once upon a time, they used to be uh, created with a view of selling it off a few years later and monetizing it and getting value out of it. I don't think anyone is trying to do that anymore. The GCCs are here to stay. And if they are here to stay, how will we create career opportunities for people? So their day-to-day -day life has to be good, their long-term career has to be good. If we don't do that, we will not have a motivated uh, workforce. And if we don't have a motivated workforce, I don't think any innovation can happen. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Lalita? Um, when it comes to transformations, uh, Pankaj, there are just a couple of things which I always advise people to pay attention to, right? Because uh, most of the organizations, at least so far, the kind of the organizations we've set up in the country, most of the GCCs do not, the newer GCCs probably are coming with more transformational agenda, but for a lot of us in the room, probably it's a next thing, it's a next maturity level, it's something what uh, they grow into. So when you're focusing on transformations, one of the most essential thing to do is performing well transforming. Right? Because you want to transform as an organization, you want to impact your headquarters, but you shouldn't drop the ball on the things that you do. Because you are able to get into the transformation phase because you are good at doing what you are doing right now. So performing well, transforming is one of the uh, big mantras which I always talk about. And the second uh, uh, important thing is paying enough attention to the change management. Um, in any transformation journey, change management is one of the big counter uh, stones to it. Um, transformations are so much more easier to do it from a GCC kind of a context because, because of the size and the scale and geographical spread of concentration in terms of either it could be you know, your digital functions or it could be group functions. You, if you're doing something here, your ability to replicate, your ability to go wider and deeper is lot that much more stronger. So uh, doing a change management in the GCC for the, you know, your parent headquarter companies is far much more easier. So this becomes really a preferred transformation destination from that point of view. And uh, the third point again, this I'll 
give it uh, with an example without naming the company. Um, one of the organizations I, I worked for, we've had so many transformations going on, right? It's uh, large companies. Um, you know, there's one of the words which we, you might have heard about it. It is transformation fatigue for the business, right? Because business keeps hearing about the word transformation, transformation forever without their lives really getting changed in any way. Um, so, uh, any time when you are taking up transformations, please focus on those quick wins, those immediate things you can show and demonstrate value so that people start trusting you from the business point of view. Otherwise, uh, for years together, you'll run so many transformation uh, projects and business will say, this is all buzzwords, my life is not changing, my life is not improving. So you have to really avoid the transformation fatigue. Um, the organization I worked for, we've put up some framework where you can really prioritize your transformations because if you, people's time is of limited, right? So you don't want to dilute it by, you know, spreading them thin across thousands of transformations. So if you want to focus your, put your money, people, effort into a fewer transformations, that's really going to create impact in the current uh, space, right? So um, that would be the top three things that I would say uh, one need to focus on. Thanks. Kripa. Uh, well said, uh, Lalita. I, I really like the transformation fatigue thing. Um, to me, Pankaj, uh, I would put uh, the big thing on my head is what next is uh, for three levels. One is, um, I think uh, you spoke about it in terms of people and, and uh, how to balance it out for them. But let me just get on to the, um, you know, the leadership. I was speaking to some KPMG folks who were presenting, saying, I think we need to be responsible as leaders much more than we are today. Reason is that there is a lot of talent out there. There is a significantly higher level of talent available on the ground. Uh, directing them and channelizing. I think we're just crowding everybody saying, right now the buzzword is Gen AI. Get a bunch of people, 70, 80 people sitting in the room, sitting and doing Gen AI. What is Gen AI? Uh, who may have, with due respect, zero domain understanding. Uh, so there's a lot of jargons which are going to be thrown in the room, but you really don't know what goes behind the machine out there. You don't know the selling uh, motions. And so one thing is, as early career, domain understanding is supremely important because Early days used to have that person who used to be reviewing remote, Pramod Basin would be reviewing and he'll say that's wrong data. Why? There is no Gen AI there, he just understands the domain well. So that's the one piece as far as the early folks. The second mid-level folks are the ones who are chewed, the sand, the tomato between the sandwich in top le level and, and the bottom levels, uh, are the ones from where in terms of enabling this domain, run the business is important like Lalita said, but if I had to, you know, run the business and understand the newest kid in the block, which is Gen AI right now, are you enabling it to happen? Are you working like uh, five to uh, three in the morning? So, you know, that whole piece on training, which we used to focus, all of us are where we are because somebody allowed us to go and train. The top level of management, what I would think uh, is important where, you know, all of us have a role to play is really sort of not confusing saying that, you know, get Gen AI, give me the results tomorrow morning. The ROI, I think this was spoken about. The return on investment is like that. I want it instantly right now. Doesn't happen that way. You know, figure out, I think she spoke about, right, figure out what you want to sit and transform. Help that thing chart lying outside by KPNG is awesome. Just help figure out the people saying that they are not running in all directions. So it's all talent, but I think responsible top leadership, uh, training as far as the mid-level is concerned and domain as far as the early entries are concerned. Ailish. You know, Pankaj, I think we are sitting at a very interesting juncture of the GCC uh, growth story. Many GCCs here have created what I'm going to call an ambidextrous culture. And this ambidextrous culture is one where you perform and you also innovate, you also transform. And India has been a place where this unique ability to set up these ambidextrous facilities has been realized through GCCs. One part of it is exploitative, the other part of it is explorative. Now, that being said, with all this context of AI and innovation and all the excitement and hype, there's a lot of buzz that I find even when I'm outside where everybody says, kuch karna hai, let's do a POC. 
कुछ तो करके दिखाते हैं लेट्स बिल्ड अ स्मॉल टीम कीप वन थिंग इन माइंड एंड आई एम गोट बी लिल कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल हियर एंड से द टेल डज नॉट वैक द डॉग द वेरी हार्ड हिटिंग स्टेटमेंट what i'm saying is if you don't have a business sponsor for a business case with an roi focus on it it's not going to happen example healthcare claims insurance companies are doing this at 92% accuracy through automation how much is ai going to bring into it do the math if you think the amount of money you're spending in for the time duration that you're investing in it is worth it do it otherwise give it to an external company to do it so be very focused on the roi get the right business sponsor in place and remember innovation sits on a foundation of domain knowledge so make sure that you have domain skills within you within the organization as well thanks prabha <laughs> so um, for someone who is beginning their innovation journey i would um, give you a simple analogy to remember so innovation is your home so when you build your home you build it with a lot of passion so to me innovation starts with an idea or a problem statement whichever way it's that's your foundation of the home foundation of innovation story so once you get the idea right which is related to a problem that you're trying to solve um understanding the problem well who's trying to solve it across across the across the globe across your organization who's solved it well get a good full understanding of the problem statement that's your real foundation um let's say you get 3 out of 10 for doing that The next three points is all about building the structure of your home, which is the solution. So, on the solution, you really need to start with small wins, your POC, MVP, whatever. But then, assess the impact and measure the impact of the solution against the problem statement, and slowly build on it till you get your solution right. And to me, I think that's where you get the remaining three points right, which is your structure of the organization, structure of your home. So then comes the roof. Without your roof, your uh innovation is not sustainable so to make your innovation sustainable and impactful and reusable you really need to put all the elements of the right technology scalability and um uh, adding the elements of all my uh, colleagues who have said all about the domain knowledge the transformative element impact to the business the the real client impact that you can measure so if you put all of those things together and make it really impactful and measurable and sustainable and scalable then you've got your roof right so with your foundation structure and roof that's when your innovation really becomes successful noticeable and you become a really unicorn within your own organization within the gcc or as a startup so now we come to the last stage so you know before coming here because gen ai is the big thing i installed a small open ai piece over here and aside i'll feed all of it in and or as a prompt i'll say kindly summarize this in a framework that people can take away so the prompt answer which has now come to me is the simon shenek golden circle framework and if you haven't heard about it you should first of all see that video but it has three circles why how and what so this framework is telling me whatever they have said trying to summarize it so what they are saying is in innovation and transformation think of all of these three areas why are you doing it how are you doing it what are you doing it and most importantly you know if you think of these three layers they are ways of thinking ways of working and ways of doing we tend to spend too much time on the last one we try to do a lot more on the ways of doing we don't experiment enough on the ways of thinking and the ways of working so i think as in the future we ought to look at experimenting on all of these three layers together and not get too overburdened by just doing experiments and not thinking are we doing it the right way are we thinking about it the right way so i think in the future my take away from all of this is that we need to think of all three together and therefore go experiment thank you panel thank you ek photo le lo devesh well once again this is the perfect photo opportunity i see all the cameras going up so let's smile a little wider for all the cameras the more the cameras the more the smiles as well it's proven right now Yes you can give a huge round of applause everybody do not Thank hesitate you. let's ensure we keep clapping humne as we do that chaliye yes i'd like to invite sameer on the stage